ever wondered how large enterprise scale systems are designed? Before major software development starts, we have to choose a suitable architecture that will provide us with the desired functionality and quality attributes. According to Wikipedia, an architectural pattern is a general, reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem in software architecture within a given context. In this video, I will briefly explain the most important architectural patterns used in the enterprise app development today. Pattern 1. Layered Pattern This is the most common architecture pattern that is also known as the entire architecture. Here, the software is divided into units called layers. There are usually four tiers of layers, presentation layer, application layer, business logic layer, and data access layer. Each of the layers has a specific role and responsibility. For example, the presentation layer is usually responsible for handling user interface. Among the advantages of the layered pattern, is that a lower layer can be used by different higher layers. However, this pattern performs poorly in the high-performance applications because it is not efficient to go through multiple layers to fulfill a business request. The layered pattern is usually used in building general desktop applications as well as relatively simple web apps. It is a good choice for situations with a very tight budget and time constraints. Pattern 2 Pipe filter pattern. In many enterprise apps, a single event triggers a sequence of processing steps, each performing a specific function. For example, let's assume a new customer order arrives. One requirement may be that the message is encrypted to prevent eavesdroppers from spying on a customer's order. A second requirement is that the messages contain authentication information in the form of a digital certificate to ensure that orders are placed only by trusted customers. To meet these requirements, we need to transform a stream of complex messages into a stream of unique, simple plain text order messages without additional data fields. The pipes and filters architecture divides a larger processing task into a sequence of smaller, independent processing steps or filters that are connected by channels or pipes. The pattern is often used in compilers where the consecutive filters perform lexical analysis, parsing, semantic analysis, and code generation. Pattern 3. Client-Server Pattern In the client-server architecture, there are two main components. The client, which is the service requester, and the server, which is the service provider. Although both client and server may be located within the same system, they often communicate over a network on separate hardware. The advantage of using the client-server pattern is an ease of modeling a set of services where clients can request them. Among the disadvantages of this pattern is that the server can be a performance bottleneck and a single point of failure. On top of that, decisions about where to locate functionality in the client or in the server are often complex and costly to change after a system has been built. Typical real-world use cases of the client-server pattern include online applications such as email, document sharing, and banking. Pattern 4. Model View Controller Pattern The user interface is typically the most frequently modified portion of an interactive application. How can user interface functionality be kept separate from application functionality and yet still be responsive to user input? or to changes in the underlying application's data? And how can multiple views of the user interface be created, maintained, and coordinated when the underlying application data changes? The solution is to use the model view controller pattern, which separates application functionality into three kinds of components. Model, which contains the core functionality and data. View, which displays the information to the user where more than one view may be defined, and controller, which handles the input from the user. The model view controller pattern is commonly used in the web frameworks such as Django and Rails. Pattern 5. Event Bus Pattern The modern enterprise software is often built as a distributed system 
that can service asynchronously arriving messages associated with high volume of events. The event bus pattern has four major components, event source, event listener, channel, and event bus. Sources publish messages to particular channels on an event bus. Listeners subscribe to particular channels. Listeners are notified of messages that are published to a channel to which they have subscribed before. The advantage of using this pattern is that new publishers, subscribers, and connections can be added easily. However, the scalability might be a problem for this pattern as all messages travel through the same bus. The event bus pattern is often used in Android development, e-commerce applications, and notification services. Pattern 6. Microservices Architecture The modern enterprise apps are required to support a variety of browsers and native mobile clients these days. The applications usually handle client requests by executing business logic, accessing a database, exchanging messages with other systems, and returning responses. In this regard, monolithic applications can become too large and complex for efficient support and deployment. The solution is to build applications as microservices. Each service is independently deployable and scalable and has its own API boundary. Different services can be written in different programming languages, manage their own database, and developed by different teams. Many use cases are applicable for a microservices architecture, especially those that involve an extensive data pipeline. Pattern 7. Broker Pattern This pattern is used to structure distributed systems with decoupled components. These components can interact with each other by remote service invocations. A broker component is responsible for the coordination of communication among components. Servers publish their capabilities to a broker. Clients request a service from the broker, and the broker then redirects the client to a suitable service from its registry. The broker pattern allows for dynamic change, addition, deletion, and relocation of objects, and it makes distribution transparent to the developer. However, among the disadvantages of the broker pattern is that it requires standardization of service descriptions. This pattern is often used in the message broker software, such as Apache ActiveNQ, Apache Kafka, RabbitNQ, and JBoss Messaging. Pattern 8 Peer-to-peer -peer pattern. In this pattern, individual components are known as peers. Peers may function both as a client requesting services from other peers and as a server providing services to other peers. A peer may act as a client or as a server or as both, and it can change its role dynamically with time. The peer-to-peer -peer pattern supports decentralized computing and is highly robust in the failure of any given node. Besides, it is highly scalable in terms of resources and computing power. However, there is no guarantee about quality of service as nodes cooperate voluntarily. On top of that, security is difficult to ensure and the system performance often depends on the number of nodes. This pattern is used in the file sharing networks such as GNUtella and G2. Multimedia protocols such as P2P TV and PDTP, as well as in cryptocurrency based products such as Bitcoin. Pattern 9 Blackboard Pattern This pattern is useful for problems for which no deterministic solution strategies are known. The Blackboard pattern consists of three main components Blackboard, which is a structured global memory containing objects from the solution space. Knowledge source, which is specialized modules with their own representation. Control component, which selects, configures, and executes modules. All the components have access to the Blackboard. Components may produce new data objects that are added to the Blackboard. Components look for particular kinds of data on the Blackboard and may find these by pattern matching with the existing knowledge source. The advantage of using this pattern is that extending the structure of the data space is easy. However, modifying the structure of the data space is hard as all applications are affected. This pattern is often used in speech recognition, 
protein structure identification, and sonar signals interpretation. Pattern 10. Master-Slave Pattern. This pattern consists of two parties, master and slaves. The master component distributes the work among identical slave components and computes a final result from the results which the slaves return. The advantage of using the master-slave pattern is the accuracy in which the execution of a service is delegated to different slaves with different implementations. However, this pattern can only be applied to a problem that can be decomposed. The master-slave pattern is usually used in database replications, where the master database is regarded as the authoritative source and the slave databases are synchronized to it. If you found this video useful, I would appreciate it if you smash the like button. Also make sure to subscribe to the Coding Tech channel and click on the notification bell. Enjoy the rest of your day.